In the last video, we had already identified the top signals in most of the Magnificent 7 stocks, and now we see the main indices making top signals as well, which could trigger a systemic fall. Now, we are gonna analyze some stocks, talk about patterns, statistics, all back it up with technical evidence. So stick with me because this video is gonna be interesting. Welcome to the Finance Hydra channel. My name is Nathan, professional trader, founder of the 5% project, which aims to help traders who don't yet have a validated strategy or don't have enough time to scan the entire market searching for opportunities to become profitable traders using our method, which is shared with our members every single day through our signals, strategies, and analysis. Just take a look at our website. The QR code is right here, link in the fixed comment below. Now, as we can see here, SPY is trying to make a top signal, all right? It is making a bearish candlestick pattern, which is a dark cloud cover candlestick pattern, by the way, which we're gonna talk about later. And, and then, we see a we see a small drop over here, a small candlestick pattern. However, it is trying to make a top signal. Was this top signal actually triggered? Not yet. In order for a spy to trigger a top signal, we gotta lose and close and preferably close below today's low in order to materialize a sharper correction, a sharper pullback to one of its support levels. Could be the 21 EMA, the exponential moving average on the daily chart, could be the 530. $3.07, the previous top level, which was a support level as well, or it could even correct all the way down to this purple line over here to the bottom line of this ascending channel. The trend, the main trend would still be bullish. Unless if we see SPY actually losing all of these support levels, making crystal clear bearish reversal chart structures, then we may consider a sharper reversal on the weekly chart as well. For now, as far as I know, we are trying to make a top signal which could trigger a mid-term pullback. Now, what is this dark cloud cover candlestick pattern? When we look at this candle and when we analyze the statistics uh, behind this pattern over here, we see this dark cloud cover candlestick pattern, theoretical performance, bearish reversal. Tested performance, bearish reversal 60% of the time. Now, this, this number, the above numbers are based on hundreds of perfect trades. This is the patternsite.com, which is from Thomas Bukowska, right? Author of uh, Encyclopedia of Kinesthetic and Chart Patterns as well. So just take a look at his books, right? It is an amazing author and I really recommend it. It is a must read for anyone who wanna be a trader, who wanna, be, who wanna make money in this market. You gotta understand the statistics behind every single pattern, every single chart pattern as well, all right? Now, this pattern over here is indeed a bearish one. It does reverse the trend 60% of the time. However, we gotta see this pattern getting triggered in order to materialize a sharper correction. Otherwise, it could be just like this top pattern over here, a hanging man candlestick pattern on June 13. Well, it wasn't triggered. Or even this gravestone doji from June 12. Well, it was not triggered as well. So only seeing one small Candlestick pattern suggesting a top signal is not enough. We gotta see SPY losing, missing today's low and closing below it tomorrow or in the next few days in order to materialize a sharper correction. The QQQ is making a more dramatic reaction over here because this is an actual bearish Inglefin candlestick pattern. Let's take a look of the Inglefin's statistics over here. Bearish Inglefin, theoretical performance, bearish reversal. Tested performance, bearish reversal, 79% of the time it is even more bearish than the dark cloud cover candlestick pattern over here. And of course, the numbers above are based on hundreds of perfect trades. So we see, we do see meaningful candlestick patterns on the indices suggesting a top signal, all right? If they actually trigger their top signals, most likely we're gonna see a sharper pullback, a systemic drop on many, many stocks, and then we're gonna see the indices retesting their next support levels. The QQQ could easily retest its 21MA on the daily chart again. Now, as we analyzed it yesterday, we saw Microsoft 
here. Dark Cloud Cover can stick pattern as well. Apple also made a dark cloud cover below, below the all-time high over here, making a lower low. This is not a very good signal. It does suggest some weakness. Google is Google is Google and Amazon. They are both trying to stabilize over here around their 21 MAs, and we don't see any meaningful bearish reversal chart structure on them yet. We could see, of course, I don't know the future, but uh, so far so good. The situation is quite is quite under control on these two, but uh, Meta is making a pullback. Tesla, Tesla over here, the situation on Tesla is quite, uh, I'm not gonna say dramatic, but uh, it is quite problematic because we see the 187 resistance area over here, 187, 186 acting as a quite reliable resistance level for Tesla. It, it did fail miserably in breaking this resistance area and that today we are dropping again. We are losing yesterday's low. We are trying to retest the 21 MA on the daily chart. And if you ask me, if we do reject this candle over here, this bullish white candlestick pattern over here, if we reject this candle by losing its low in the next couple of days or maybe next week, then we are going to officially reject any possibility of a major bullish recover of a major bullish reversal on Tesla, because we're going to reject a very important bullish candlestick pattern. This was a bullish Inglefin candlestick pattern, all right? Just like the bearish Inglefin we just analyzed it on QQQ, the bullish Inglefin is a very, very powerful reversal candlestick pattern, which does reverse, which does reverse the trend, I believe, 80, more than 80% of the time, if I recall correctly. Just take a look at the pattern site.com for more details. Now, by rejecting this candle, then, well, we're going to just seek the next support level, which is at 167. All right. We are still, we are still inside, trapped inside this congestion between the 187 and the 167. Only, only a meaningful, real breakout of one of these key points over here of either the 187 or the 167 would would bring something actually new then we could see either a very good bullish reversal or a very strong bearish continuation chart pattern by by breaking the 187 by the way we're gonna automatically break the 21 ma on the weekly chart as well which has been acting as the most annoying and the powerful resistance level for Tesla in, in recent months, right? Since April over here, we, 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 we tried to break the 21 MA and then we fail. We tried, we failed. We tried, we failed. Tried, tried, tried. We tried again this week and we failed again. So the 21 MA on the weekly chart is a major resistance level and it is very close to the 187 resistance level seen on the daily chart as well. So we gotta do a meaningful bullish breakout of this resistance area in order to see Tesla materializing a very good and solid bullish reversal, possibly reversing the long term trend as well. The 206 would be our next technical target, but uh, honestly, we could even seek higher levels. Maybe the 265, maybe th this is a real possibility. I don't know. Remember, I don't know. I don't need to know the future. Real trading is not predictive, it is reactive. So we got to just react to the information we see right here, right now. Technical analysis is all about markets psychology. It is not about predicting the future. All right. Now, as we can see here, <clears throat> Tesla is still inside a very annoying congestion. Now, Nvidia, on the other hand, is insanely bullish. Oh, but Nathan, today we are, today we see another, just like on SPY, we see another dark cloud cover candlestick pattern, right? Which does reverse the trend 60% uh, of the time, right? Yes, it is. However, this top signal wasn't triggered yet. And if you ask me, it would take a little bit more than just one dark cloud cover to actually make Nvidia trigger a pullback. In order for Nvidia to correct a little bit more, we got to lose the 125 area over here, the previous top level, which was a top level one, two times. And uh, it is supposed to act as a future resistance level for us, following the principle of polarity in technical analysis. Previous resistance levels are going to act as future support levels and vice versa. Now, 
only by losing the 125, I would see Nvidia actually triggering a sharper correction ahead. As far as I know, we could easily linger above this area over here without making any bearish uh, chart structure or without making any meaningful candlestick pattern over here and, and uh, the bullish bias would still remain intact. So the situation over here is extremely, extremely bullish. Nvidia is still insanely bullish despite this possible top signal over here. And even if we see a top signal, if you ask me, the 125 is our main support level to work with. Now, Palantir on the other hand over here is also making a top signal. However, the situation here is a little bit more complicated because it is trying to make a dark cloud cover candlestick pattern uh, above a previous resistance level at $25.47. If Palantir, if Palantir closes below this resistance level over here, then okay, then I believe that it is going to trigger a sharper correction on the daily chart, possibly to the $24 again next, or maybe, maybe to the 21 MA, the exponential moving average on the daily chart, which is another technical support level for Palantir. So one of these two support levels are supposed to work. Remember, when, when we analyze a stock and when it is in a bull trend, pullbacks should not make us panic because pullbacks in, a, in bull trends during bull trends are nothing more, nothing less than buying opportunities because you're going to follow the main trend and you're going to buy near a support level when the risk reward ratio is optimized. So pullbacks should not make us panic over here. Let's use corrections. Let's use pullbacks in our favor without panicking, without uh, panic selling, etc. right? So let's just calmly react to what's going on right here, right now. So if we see a pullback on Palantir, if we see a pullback on Nvidia, or even, even if we see a sharper correction in Tesla back to the 167, maybe we're gonna see just more buying opportunities on many stocks. And I will be here every single day keeping you guys updated on Tesla, Nvidia, Palantir, Spy, QQQ, the Magnificent 7 and many other stocks. So just subscribe to this channel if you did enjoy this analysis so far. Click the like button to support me and join the 5% project for more signals, strategies and premium analysis. You have 7 days for free, no strings attached. So just Take a look at our website, QR code right here, link in the fixed comment below. Thank you very much for your audience, my dear friends. See you guys tomorrow. Stay safe. Bye-bye.